All right, next up we have Barb Jones. What do you get when you cross a master animal trapper with a vegetarian bent on saving the cat world? Will you get cat commando Barb Jones, TNR coordinator for Happy Cats Haven? Barb is a fierce advocate, not only for the cats, but the often marginalized people who care for them. Here is Barb Jones presenting the Cat Commando. I'm under trailers in deserted cars, searching dark alleys, breaking into abandoned buildings, crawling commando style under decks and into crawl spaces. If you look closely, you can see a kitten under this abandoned truck. I'm Barb Jones, and I do TNR. <laughs> TNR, or Trap New to Return, helps save homeless cats. A cat born and raised without human contact, or who has been abandoned and reverted to wild ways in order to survive, is considered a feral cat. Ferals often live in groups called colonies and take refuge wherever they can find a food source. Unowned, unsocialized, and breeding in perpetuity, cats in unmanaged feral colonies experience extreme suffering. Unmanaged feral cat colonies are the most underserved segment of companion animals. Trap to return is the most humane and effective way of controlling feral cat populations. Feral cats who are TNR'd are spayed or neutered, vaccinated, and surgically ear-tipped on one ear. An ear-tip is a universally recognized sign of a cat that has been TNR'd. The cats are rehomed, excuse me, the cats are returned to their home territories where dedicated caretakers feed and provide shelter for them. The feral cat overpopulation problem is worsened by the abandonment of domestic cats. If these cats survive and are left to breed, their offspring are raised to be feral and who in turn produce more feral offspring. As part of addressing the problem of feral colonies, we try to rescue these cats left behind to make it on their own, rehabilitate them, and find them forever homes. All metropolitan areas have thousands of community cats. Most people don't want them rounded up and killed. They want to see the cat population stabilized. TNR relieves cats of the constant stress of mating and pregnancy, Neutering cats curbs behaviors associated with mating, such as roaming, fighting, and yowling, behaviors that often piss people off. It improves the health and quality of life of the homeless animals and helps cats and people coexist peacefully in our shared environment. Colonies that are 100% TNR'd decline over time, naturally and humanely. A good Samaritan might start feeding two cats that show up on their property. And within six months, they've gone from two to eight, and six months later, from eight to 16. In another year, that 16 could easily reach 30 cats. A four-month-old kitten can go into heat at six months, having to protect her babies, go into heat at four months and have a litter at six months having to protect her babies in a dangerous environment when she is barely more than a kitten herself. They face threats from all sides, like wild predators, including raccoons who will kill to protect resources, neighborhood dogs, and the biggest threat of all, humans. I've been helping people help cats since I had to pack my kids with me. They learned from an early age to be kind, caring humans. In the late 70s, a friend and I started a TNR program in a small town in West Texas. We helped fix a mama cat for an elderly lady named Edna Heine. She didn't want handouts and insisted on paying us back a dollar a month. But she also needed help with food. So once a month, we drove to her house, collected a dollar, and gave her a $10 bag of food. <laughs> in a year, <laughs> we were only in the hole $108. <laughs> As long as cats can eat and sleep in peace, you'll find them in every imaginable environment, including correctional institutions. A colony was found to be increasing at one such facility. The female inmates were written up if caught feeding, since the cats were considered wildlife. They called me to trap and remove. 
I persuaded them to implement TNR and allow the ladies to feed and care for the cats. I set the traps and attracted a participating audience. Then along came Emily. She got right in my face and said, what are you doing with them traps? I told her we were trapping to get the cats fixed. Then I asked her if she fed the cats. She looked me right in the eyes, took a long drag off her cigarette and said, is that a trick question? <laughs> I said, no, I'm really looking for somebody to help feed the cats. She said, oh, hell, we all feed. I thought you were a snitch. <laughs> By the way, the cats' names are Bandit Mischief, Sketchy, Felony One, and Felony Two. <laughs> named by, as they call themselves, the felons. <laughs> Every aspect of a correctional facility is regimented and services for community cats are no exception. The highs and lows of cat rescue are extreme. Big Daddy showed up at a colony with an eye condition that would have eventually blinded him. After months of medical care and eye surgery, he opted to get off the streets and into a forever home. Here he is now, sitting in his club chair, watching Jeopardy, and probably enjoying a highball. <laughs> Sometimes people become cat heroes even when they don't plan to. When Kinsey moved into her fourplex, it came pre-installed with two mama cats and all their kittens, including this little one, Lovebug. Community kittens sometimes need medical help and a few weeks with a foster family, and Lovebug was ready to find her forever home. Working together with volunteers, veterinarians, and everyday people, we improve the lives of abandoned cats like Big Daddy. We also prevent feral kittens from being born on the streets and save the ones already born, like Lovebug and her litter mates. Like Edna Heine, Gary loved his cats. He was on a limited income and needed help with vet care and food. When Gary died, we made sure his cats found new families. It's about the cats, it's about the community. Helping people care for the cats they love makes this a better world, one cat at a time.